you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalms chapter 1. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. The title of what I'm going to talk about this morning is Are you making New Year's resolutions? Or are you ready for a New Year's revelation? New Year's resolutions? <clears throat> Or a New Year's Resolution. Let's begin in Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor, seateth, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now do you see why I say this goes right along with what we were talking about in Sunday school? <laughs> Blessed is the man that walketh in the counsel of the garden. Very briefly, I want to reason with you on the thought of are you going to make a New Year's resolution? Or are you going to live a New Year's revelation? You know, folks, God has allowed us to see a new year. He allowed each one of us to wake up this morning. Amen. To take a breath. And you know what? It's not because we're good, but it's because God is good. All the time. Because when you think about it, and you think back over this last year, God has heard our petitions. God's entertained our supplications. God's answered our prayers, or at least I hope he's answered some of your prayers. God's healed our body. He's directed us. He's prepared us. And there's been times when he's restored us. And he's revived us. And he blessed us. I don't know one person sitting in this room that I look at that I don't think was blessed in 2022. Amen. And you know, that ought to make us reach over and look at the person beside us and give them a high five and tell them, say, God's been good to me. God's been good to me. And now we reach a new year in time. And you know, there's people all over the world. They started last week. I heard it in the office. And especially last night, people were making New Year's resolutions. You know, and if the truth be known, we hear about revelations resolutions every new year. Yeah. Every new year, people start talking about all these new resolutions. I'm going to spend more time with my family. I'm going to get rid of these habits. I'm going to change the way I eat. I'm going to start working out. And the end results, nine times out of ten, is fair. Amen. Time and time again. You know what the reason is and why our resolutions are usually a fair? It's because resolutions are self-imposed. That's right. Resolutions are what we say. Amen. It's self-will, self-propelled ideas. And nine times out of ten, it don't even include having prayed about or the power of God. That's right. But what we really need to do is not make another New Year's resolution, but a new revelation. Because if the truth be told, the best revelations that you will ever be involved is will come from God. Through the scripture and through divine inspiration by him to you and to me. Just like we were talking about. What can we do? We can start asking God. We can ask him to show us a revelation of what he wants me to do. See, because when you get a revelation from God, it is God's plan and purpose for your life. Even in the text before us, the psalm provided that with us, with a spirit-filled revelation. He said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the godly, nor stands in the ways of the sinner. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Amen. It's in God's plans, folks. So we need to be living our life and taking the time to get God's revelation of what he wants us to do, not resolutions for ourselves. That's right. You know, when he uses the word blessed, the idea of blessed in the general sense 
It's something that comes from God. Amen. The, the psalmist said, blessed is the man. He reveals to us that it's something that we have to do. See, by watching the company we keep in 2023, by watching the things we do, and watching the priorities we give, we are beginning to look for a revelation from God. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. If you will truly pray for God to give you the revelation in 2023 for what he wants for your life, Amen. I'll guarantee you there'll be some things he tells you to get rid of. Amen. And if my young people will hear, I'll probably tell them there'll probably be some things he tell you to race out of that phone. There may be even some contacts that you need to delete off of your cell phone. Amen. There needs to be things that need to go. Why? Because it's time for us as Christians to start looking for the revelation of God instead of worrying about resolutions. That's right. We need to start digging deep inside and taking the time. You know what I think one of the greatest faults of Christians are? <clears throat> we do, we say, we say, we take the time for God, but do we? Do we? How many of us set aside a devoted time every single day to read our Bible and study and talk to the Lord. How many of us do that? Be careful. Because when we delight in the Lord, He will give us the revelation of what He wants to do with our lives. And when we do that, though, you need to be prepared. Because He's going to take some things out of your life that don't need to be in there. Because the only way his revelation can truly work through us and we can be successful is if we're obedient. Right. And we're going to have to be obedient. It says if we delight in the law of the Lord. That's what's wrong with this country. Nobody wants to be obedient to the Lord sometimes. The law of the Lord doesn't fit the situation that people are around sometimes. It makes them uncomfortable. That's right. It, it shows the sin that comes through in people's lives. And when it does, that's when they back away. But we need to hold on to this. See, if we don't get the revelation of God and let him have control in our lives, sin is going to wreak havoc every way around us and keep us from being the success that God wants us to be. Paul the Apostle never backed down. He followed the revelation that God gave him. A lot of times it landed him in prison. How many of you would do what God told you to do if you knew he was going to end up in the Buncombe County or the Madison County Jail? Think about it. <coughs> it's a serious thing, folks. Our New Year's revelation needs to be that we want to be blessed by God. God wants to bless us. But in order for this new year, for us to be successful and for us to be Blessed, we have to be obedient. Amen. We have to give God some time one on one with Him. We have to not be afraid to do what God wants us to do. Amen. And sometimes that means terminating some people in your life. <coughs> sometimes that means terminating things that you've been exposed to and around. Huh. You know, if you hang around wolves, guess what? A lot of times you start to howl like a wolf. Now, folks, this may sound harsh, but if we truly want to make a difference as Christians, if we truly want to be what God wants us to be as we go into this new year, 2023, because just like we said in Sunday school, the devil's not going away, folks. This society is not going away. So we have one or two choices. We can step up and be blessed by God and be a witness, a light in the midst of the devil. Or we can let him devour us. It's that simple. Amen. And that's what it boils down to. And we do have the power. Because we're Christians. <coughs> we belong to him. And if we will follow his directions, we don't have to worry about the outcome. If we would just be obedient to him. Amen. When Paul was talking to the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians 6 and 17, here's what he said to them in that verse. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean, and I will receive you. 
You want to know how we can make a change and how we can have a New Year's revelation? Don't be afraid to be different. Young people, don't be afraid to be what God wants you to be. That's right. I don't care if every kid in school does this and that. You don't have to do it. You be what God wants you to be because he had you brought to this earth because he's got a plan for your life. That's right. Each and every one of you. You guys are special. Did you know that? Did you know you're very special? Do you know that, Hayden? You are a very special person. God gave each of us our souls. And that meant he had a plan for our lives. And he wants us to be what he wants us to be. And that means we got to turn loose of the world. we got to quit worrying about <coughs> being accepted. Because I'm going to tell you something. If God's got something for you to do, he'll give you the wisdom and knowledge to know how to Amen. do it. Amen. He will give you what you need to do what you need to do. But you've got to be willing <laughs> to listen and have that revelation. And sometimes that means letting go. You know, if I'm about to fall out of a tree and I've got my pockets full of stuff that I'm trying to hang on to, I'm going to start getting rid of that stuff out of my pockets that's going to keep me from hanging on to that limb until somebody can rescue me. And as Christians, you and I have got to let go of the stuff of the world. We've got to let go of worrying about confinements and being accepted and being this and being that. Because sometimes it's not always popular to do what God wants you to do. Right. But I can assure you and reassure you that if we will be what he wants us to be, he will help us to walk in that way. In other words, what am I saying? We can be blessed if we do what God wants us to do. And not only sometimes do we not, do we not only need to terminate and delete stuff, that prevents us to live in what God wants us to do. But this text also tells us that we need to saturate ourselves in the principles of the Word of God. And he talked about that this morning in Sunday school. The reason we're where we're at today is because we've gone away from the Christian principles that we were raised with. Amen. That's right. When I was a kid, it wasn't up for discussion whether or not I was going to church on Sunday morning. That one option wasn't left up to me. That wouldn't have been up for discussion in John Wood days. We need to get back to the basis of what this country was founded on. If we want to be blessed, we need to get our Bible ready. Now, let me, I said that wrong. If we want to be blessed, we need to get our Bible read it and believe it. I still didn't say it right. What's David trying to tell us here? We need to get our Bibles. We need to read it. We need to believe it, we need to pray, and then we need to apply it to the everyday thing we do in our lives. Amen. Don't Amen. just read it, but we need to apply it to our lives, folks. You can sit and read this book all day long, but if you don't apply what's in it to our lives, it's of no benefit to you. That's right. We need to stop running away from doing things that God wants us to do. And we need to stop trying to do it our way and pray and do it God's way. Amen. Our churches need to start doing it God's way. Amen. I want to see this building full. I do. But I won't give up the standard that Jesus Christ has in this Bible to do it. That's right. It's not right. We need to stand on principles. And we need to be what God's called us to do. You know, we delight in the fact that we have oxygen. We don't even think about it. We just breathe. It's there. We delight in the fact that we can see. Because, you know, without it, we couldn't do anything. Folks, as blood, both sons and daughters of God, we have to delight ourselves in this world. This is our, resolution, our revelation. We don't need resolutions. We need to live by what's in this book. Amen. Because this word is our spiritual life support. It's what's going to hold you up. It's what's going to keep you going. Amen. And you know, sometimes not only do we need to terminate some things in our circle, but we need to saturate ourselves in this word. You know, when I was little, we used to memorize John 
I think that's one of the first verses they teach children. But you know, John 3, 16 is such a deep word when you break it down word for word and start studying. Mm -hmm. Psalms 23, when I start studying Psalms 23, you know, they read that a lot at funerals. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk, blah, blah, blah. When you start breaking that down, it's amazing what's in there. That's what's called, folks, saturating ourselves in the word of God. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something else. This text also tells us uh, we have to stay planted. And we have to stay positioned in the Word of God to be productive and prosperous in 2023. <coughs> Let me read verse 3 again. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Did you know that was a promise from God? You ask in Sunday school, what can we do? Do what God's called you to do, and he'll make you prosper. The things he wants, the difference he wants you to make in Madison County, on your job, at work, around your friends, it will be prosperous for him if you will abide and do what he tells us to do. Amen. But sometimes that means digging in. Sometimes that means staying rooted. How do I stay rooted? I learn these things that God has shown me, his promises. We need to know his promises without having to flip on the phone or in the Bible to find them. <coughs> I had a young man come to me and ask me some questions and wanted me to pray with him about getting saved. And I did. A lady later that overheard us said, how did you do that without, said, I had to got my phone out and looked up how to lead somebody to the Lord. Now that's sad. Amen. As Christians, you need to know how to lead somebody to the that's Lord. Right. You never know when God's going to put somebody in your path. He wants us to be planted and positioned in the word of God so we can be productive and we can be prosperous. Because I can assure you, when you get grounded in this word, you will make a difference. That's right. You may be that seed that is responsible for a lot more apples. You know, it takes one seed to grow a tree, right? Uh -huh. An apple tree, one seed. But once that tree grows, how many apples are produced from that? That's the same way with us. That's how we make a difference. That's how people know. We shall be like a tree planted by the waters. But you know, a tree that's been intentionally planted in a careful chosen spot, did you know that? It's most prosperous. Amen. You go out here to these orchards where they're planting trees, and you talk to them about how they plant each individual tree. They look at the sun. They look at the ground. They even look at the conditions. And I didn't know this till I went to an apple to an apple festival. They even look at how they have their fields based on how the winter moves in in that territory and how it may affect the blossoms on the tree while they're trying to produce the fruit. They're grounded in their knowledge about how to grow that tree. That's what makes it so productive. That's exactly what makes you and I productive as Christians. We get grounded in this word and we know what God wants us to do. Amen. And folks, give him the time that he needs. We live, myself included, we live at such a fast pace. We live in such a hurry anymore. We don't have time for God like we need to have. That's another reason our country's where it's at. We don't take the time for God that we need to take. Amen. We don't have time to get in the counsel of God because we're so busy. We're not listening. We need to learn to stay planted. Because when we get planted, nothing can halt or hinder that process of what God's going to do in your life. That's right. And he promises us he will prosper us. Financially, materialism, there ain't none of us that don't enjoy that type of freedom. But you know what's most important to me? Is that I prosper spiritually with my Lord and, and for my Lord and Savior. That I can do His will. Because you know what? You and I are not here just to be pretty. He has us here to do a ministry and to do a mission. And when our work here is done, He's going to take us home. One of the last things that Jimmy said to somebody one time, and they asked him, said, Jimmy, why do you think that it's coming your time? And he told me this several times leading up to the week that he died. He said, Donna, I know that I know that I know that my work is done. I've done what God called me to do. Amen. 
And folks, when God calls us to, and when we are finished with what God's called us to do, he's going to take us out. The important thing is, is though, I don't want to fall short on what God has called me to do. And nor than do you. Because if we will do and be and live a new revelation to be grounded and to be blessed, we will be able to do and prosper in what God wants us to do while we're here. And that's the only way we're going to be successful. We need to stay planted. <coughs> God's all right, ain't he? All the time. God's good. All the time. He's been good to you. He's been good to me. And if people would just look around, even those who are out here living in sin, did they not? Real, they don't realize how good God is to them. Do you know why? Because if He wouldn't, they'd be gone. That's right. They, I, I don't. I, sometimes I just don't get it how people don't understand that even though they're living in a world of sin around their lives and the things they're doing, being totally disobedient, if it wasn't for God's grace and mercy, they would be gone immediately because their breath would be out of them. That's right. Because our lives are given by God, and it can be taken the same way. You know, sometimes I think people's lives are cut short. <coughs> because God knows that if he don't do what he needs them to do they're going to make the wrong move Amen. let me tell you something sometimes God has a tendency just like when I was little there were things that my parents did not allow and they had a reason for that because they knew the danger it would put my life into so it was cut off. It wasn't allowed. And sometimes, as humans, because of our free will, I think there are people who cut their lives short because they are not being obedient. And God knows if they continue on the path, they're going to become so entangled with the devil that they're going to die and go to hell. Now, let me tell you something. God's real. Amen. Right. But he's true, and his word is true. Amen. And you and I can have a blessed 2023. This church can have a blessed 2023. But in order to do that, folks, we've got to walk in the counsel of the Lord, not of the ungodly. We've got to stand as Christians, not in the way of the sinners. We've got to sit in a way that we do make a difference. I think it's great. That if I go in a restaurant and we pray and it makes everybody come uncomfortable, I won't do it for a show. <coughs> but if it condemns them, praise God, because that means God's word is going out. That's right. In a way that I didn't even think about. Just like Billy was talking about when they were on the cruise. Don't be afraid to stand. Stand on his revelation. Be willing this year as we go into this to be able to do what God wants you to do. It's funny sometimes how when I feel so blessed for the Lord, I feel like the devil is trying his best to choke me down. And you know what? <coughs> if I have to do it in a whisper, so be it. I'll finish it in a whisper. Because it's not about me. It's about his word. That's right. See, that's it with who I am. With the position I'm in now as a Christian and a pastor, it's not really about what I want. You know, there's sometimes God gave me a sermon and I'm sitting there thinking, God, what? Why do you want me to talk about this? Or why are you leading me this direction? And then he helps me to understand that my job is to be the deliverer. Yeah. His job is to give the sermon. Hebrews chapter 10 and 23 I'm going to read as Billy gets ready and we get ready to close. Because I think this is the one thing that this whole thing talks about. About a New Year's revelation versus a New Year's resolution. When we are going into a New Year's re revelation, we are trusting God. We're asking God and believing. And this is what he says in Hebrews 10 and 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Amen. For he is faithful that promised. He is faithful. And if you will hold true to the revelation of what God wants you to do, it may not happen overnight. It may not, folks. God may be telling you to do something, and he may be walking you through it step by step. Look at the Apostle Paul. Bless his heart. God would give him something to do, and he'd go to do it, and then he'd wind up in jail. 
Now, if that was you, would you stop and say, well, Lord, you told me to do this. Why am I in jail? But he didn't do that. He knew he was doing what God wanted him to do. He got through that and he just kept on going. And sometimes that's what you and I have to do when we are feeling full with the revelation that God's given us. We have to be what we need to be. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Folks, if we will develop a New Year's revelation instead of a New Year's resolution, there's nothing that God cannot do through you. Amen. I will promise you this. He will prosper you. He will help you to grow. And he will help you to be all that he's called you to be. And the times that you think you're being the least affected may be the time that God's using you the most. <clears throat> Do you know that's what happens in Christians' walk sometimes? They think, oh, well, this is useless. Nobody's listening. I'm not doing any good. But you know what? If I follow in the new year re re revelation of God and follow in his footsteps and in his counsel, that's not my problem to worry about. If there's one of you here or if there's 30 of you here, I'll give what God's given me to give, and then it follows the rest. Because God said his word won't go out for it. That's right. His word won't go out for it. And he will not leave you unsuccessful if you will follow in his revelation.